if you're a freshman or sophomore in college, you'll probably notice a couple of things. One of these things being, there aren't any real internships for freshmen and sophomores in college. But today's video isn't about that, because the answer to that question is just a simple Google search away. Today, we're gonna to be talking about my resume. A pretty successful resume, I'd say, that got me into Microsoft and landed me my first internship with very minimal to, I'd say, no coding experience prior. When I was an underclassman looking for ways to break into tech, I noticed that most of the best internships gave preference to juniors and seniors. And so I truly never understood the idea of how I was supposed to get internship experience for those other internships if there was no place for me to actually get an internship. You get me? So I looked at a couple resources online, but I couldn't find any real help for a program like this one. So I was confused, lost, and didn't know where to start. Lucky for you, we're about to jump into it. Perhaps one of the most obvious yet important parts of your resume is having a really informative heading. Your heading should include three things about yourself, your name, your contact, and your portfolio, whether that's a GitHub repo or your personal website. These pieces of information are some of the most important things that a recruiter will need if they're going to pass you on to the next round. So it's important for you to have them right there at a glance for the recruiter to just look at them. Your name should be in big legible font and your contact information should be right next to your name. This should be your school email and your mobile phone number. And from my experience, oftentimes recruiters will use this mobile phone number for your initial phone screen interview. So make sure your phone number is correct. Having a link to your portfolio of choice is super important when recruiters are looking through and navigating to see what applicant they're gonna pass on to the next round. This can look like a GitHub repo, or if you don't have any code repository available to show, you can make your own custom website and link that as your personal portfolio. Whatever your choice is, make sure that it's a clickable link so that recruiters can just simply click on the PDF and be taken to your corner of the internet. Let's continue. Okay, let's talk about your education. Being an underclassman oftentimes means that the most amount of education you've received has been a high school education, which is fine because high school can certainly teach you a lot. But let's make sure you have the right information on here. Your education section should consist of the following. Your name of school, major, class year and GPA, and any notable achievements that you might have. Now, because you're an underclassman, I recommend doing this for your high school as well. This will show your reputation more as a scholar than just putting your first semester or even year in college. Your relevant coursework should be a straightforward section. Include classes that speak to the program. Things like calculus, CS intro courses, specialized courses, and even entrepreneurship courses. As much as you want to add that photography course, don't. It doesn't add to the type of profile that you're trying to build. For courses that might not be as clear to understand, it is best to include a small description of topics that these courses cover. For example, I had a course called Quantitative Engineering Analysis on my resume, but this course is only given at Olin College of Engineering, where I went to school. So in order to give the recruiter some context about what this class was, underneath the class, I put the things that this course taught about. For example, multivariable calculus, linear algebra, programming, and physics. Having this small description allows the recruiter to see that I am taking those higher level math courses as well as those physics and programming courses. Your skills should be a place where you can brag about the things that you know. Now, you don't really need to be an expert at the skills that you put on your resume. Heck, you don't even need to be really good at them. If you've used the technologies in the past and you can talk about them, then that is good enough. I'm gonna be putting up some stuff that I put on my resume for my skill section. Here we have some tech stacks or software languages. We've got regular languages. And we also have general software, general engineering software that I've used in the past. Please 
don't put anything you've never heard of or never used on your resume just for the sake of making it sound cooler or more professional. The key to maximizing this section on your resume is to mention the things and the skills that you've put into practice in the past. You don't want to look cool on paper and then look like a complete dummy when you're actually in an interview and the interviewer asks you about the thing that you know nothing about. Trust me, don't do that. Include your skills. Now, your projects are one of the two most important sections on your resume. As an underclassman, projects show your learning in action. If you don't have much work experience to put on your resume, the project section of your resume is where you can stand out and showcase the technical skills that you do have. My resume had one project that I was incredibly proud of that happened to be my first ever coding project. I learned about conditionals, for loops, unit testing, and even some recursion. I tried to make it sound super cool by saying things like, created a program for gene detection in Python using a database in order to analyze for possible pathogenic genes in a given DNA sequence, specifically a strand of salmonella. Now, if you don't have time to build another project before the internship, you can do what I did and talk about something like it was a coding project. To me, that was my photo club I started in high school. Goats. I presented GOATS as an idea to build community with high school photographers and models in New York City. While it wasn't really an engineering based project, I felt comfortable twisting the truth a little bit because it was something I was passionate about. Therefore, I was able to use it as an asset during my final round interviews. And fun fact, I did. I mentioned GOATS was aiming to expand via a MERN, MongoDB, Express, React, and Node.js web app slash website. Did I lie? Not really. It's still a work in progress. <laughs> the final and most important part of this resume is a place where you need to talk about your previous experience. Things that have made you stand out or have taught you something in the past. To be really straightforward with you lot, Two out of the three experiences that I had on my resume when I was applying were social media related stuff. And this is okay because you're just starting out. If you had more experience, you'd probably be applying to software engineering or even program management internships at these companies. As an underclassman, I had very little coding experience. As a matter of fact, I did some free work at a startup where I learned the basics of UX and UI design and also some basic HTML and CSS stuff. Apart from doing this volunteer work at the startup, I also managed to be a content creator slash social media intern at my college, which is where I worked during the school year. And this is how I sustained myself as a college student. Lastly, I managed to put my freelance photo business that I started the summer before my first year of college. I put down the type of work I did, the amount of revenue I made, which, spoiler alert, it wasn't that much, and how I left my clients satisfied with their end product, which was the photos. Putting all of these experiences together, you might think that I'm applying to some sort of marketing internship or a marketing position at a company, but in reality, all I was trying to do was show my passion for technology. Now, these companies can train you to do the work, but it's really hard to train passion into someone. You either have it or you don't. And for your benefit, try to make sure you convey this in your resume. If you're wondering, how do I know if my resume is good enough? feel free to book a session with me down below. I've helped five students in the past appear internships at Microsoft with their Explore program. So with the copious amounts of people reaching out to me on LinkedIn, which is amazing, I can only help so much. And I'd like to help you put your best foot forward for this once in a lifetime opportunity. Of course, while this isn't 100% necessary, I wish I had someone who had done and helped other people get into the program and gave me the okay with my work. It adds to your confidence when applying. But that's it, my resume in a nutshell. Sure, it's changed since then, but as a freshman and as an underclassman, more importantly, you have to remember that you have to build up that confidence over time. The people who make a difference in this world are the ones that never stop aspiring for more. With the mentality of hope, coupled with the desire to succeed, you too can make a great candidate for an opportunity like this. As always, believe in others, believe in yourself, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.